Hello and welcome to the March 2014 energy reading. My name is Adrienne Elise. Well, starting out in March on the very first day, we have a new moon, and this speaks to the cosmic alignment that's working to happen in our lives and on the planet. And um, so we're bringing these universal laws, laws of divine laws, into our 3D reality, and this kind of speaks to that. On the last day of February, uh, Mercury went direct and Mercury was retrograde for most of February. And this last Mercury retrograde went from being in the sign of Pisces back into the sign of Aquarius and then is moving back into Pisces. And so the messenger, this cosmic messenger, Mercury brings us messages and understanding, has been exploring this shift of ages because we have been moving out of the age of Pisces and into the age of Aquarius. So the information coming to us right now has a lot to do about what it means to be in this new world, how we assimilate our personal life, and uh, the energies of the collective. Then right away on the first with the new moon, Mars went retrograde. Now our main action planets are Mars, Mercury, and Saturn. And Mercury has just gone direct but uh, Mars um, goes retrograde on the 1st, and um, then, on, then shortly after that, Saturn goes retrograde. And so they are sojourning together, kind of in tandem. And it's interesting because this uh, Mercury retrograde and, and then shifting to go direct, but then now these other action planets are going retrograde. And so this is the next phase of learning about our new world. And so it's March is a time to really pay attention, especially because the sun is in Pisces. And so we can open up to some the collective energies of the, the, the unified field and uh, this, our psychic energies, our psychic awareness is opening. And so it's a really good month to either if you have if you've been thinking about wanting to start something like a meditation practice to go ahead and start that or if you have a meditation practice already to cement that into reality to really make it an everyday priority um, and kind of make that something very important for your uh, knowing that that's really important for your growth right now because um, we are there's so much shifting happening so fast and so if we can take this time uh, to go deeper into our winter cave and to be in meditation and start to open our psych fac faculties to receive messages about what our personal role is in this new world. Um, that's going to be, it's a really good time for that and to prepare for the month of April where we have a whole bunch of astrology happening and um, I will get into that more. But this Mars going retrograde, Mars is in Libra and so Mars is our fighter planet or our action planet, the male part of us wants to go out there and do it. But it's in a it's in the sign of Libra, which is a sign of harmony, of love, of um justice. And so it's asking us to find a different kind of fight. And um so when we rework our way of fighting, it has a lot it says a lot about the Aquarian age and so this Mercury retrograde from Pisces back into Aquarius into Pisces and that information coming forward and then this Mars retrograde in Libra bringing a different fight to our world um, that we're living in and it's kind of giving us a picture of this Aquarian age that instead of it's just not really time to it's not so effective to go fight against the old systems that are no longer working what's really working is to quietly go off and create a whole different and new way of doing things and have fun while you're doing it and then the beautiful thing one of the main thing about things about the age of Aquarius is it said to have a lot to do with technology and bringing us together through the means of technology into that oneness. And so then these people who are bravely creating new ways of doing things, then that can be an infectious, um, through our social networks, get out there and demonstrate to the world these ways of doing things, different ways of doing things. Now with Saturn also going retrograde, um, Saturn is still in the sign of Scorpio, which it has been for quite a while. And but now, and it's made it quite a ways through um, Scorpio, and then now it's going backwards. And Scorpio is the sign of our inner depths, our inner psyche, the darkest inner, inner um, secrets within ourselves. And so it's kind of, it feels a little overwhelming because it's like, oh, haven't I been there? I mean, 
I just went through all this. Do I really need to go back and do this again? And um, yes, we do. We need to make sure that we got all of the shadow parts of us resolved. And if we missed some things or we didn't want to look at it, now is the time that it's going to come up. Um, but these are the darkness, the places that need to move within ourselves so we can bring this new, these new energies in, to bring the light of our new world in. And so it's really important. And the cool thing about this is that even though we're going back and retracing our steps with the Saturn retrograde, um, we've been to this territory before. And now we can go back to that inner child, to that psyche, to these places within ourselves that uh, we don't really want to look at with um, feelings of being able to accept ourselves on a deep level for this process and to know that these feelings that we may come across this feelings of deep worthlessness or or feelings of insecurity and um the 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 darkness that's within us that everybody feels that way and this is kind of part of the gift of the collective energy of the sun in pisces right now and so tapping into this meditation this unified field and Finding that self-love and acceptance to go back th to this territory in an empowered way, and say, "Yeah, mm -hmm, I've got some, I, I've got some shadows, and I'm, I'm ready to get rid of them. I'm ready to stop judging myself. When we can stop judging ourselves about those shadows. That's when we can finally get to the work of releasing that energy." And so this Mars retrograde in Libra is supporting this energy of self-love this bringing some justice and harmony to our inner fight to feeling like we can justify ourselves and love ourselves through this process and then the saturn retrograde in scorpio is saying what did we miss about the shadow now that we feel stronger in ourselves can we go back and really let that shit go and um this is and it feels like a little bit like, oh, do I really need to go back to that territory? But this is no longer the time to wallow in it. That was so 2013. Now things are moving so fast. It's just not even a possibility to wallow in those places. It's just shifting and changing. And so the effect is when you go to these darker places, you go to the shadow, you're going to have more immediate gratification in your life and validation of the work you're doing. So it's going to really help you be able to move forward and not feel like you're stuck in that darkness that what's coming up in the shadow parts of ourselves is what needs to move so that we can move into the life of our dreams so that we can move into um, bringing this light to the planet and so on the heels of these planets going retrograde on the sixth jupiter which has been retrograde since november of 2013 starts to go direct and these action planets pulling back is actually leaving more of a stage for this for Jupiter as it starts to go direct. And so Mercury and Jupiter are kind of moving into this direct energy. And Jupiter is our expansive planet, the bird's eye view, the ability to see ourselves as something bigger and part of something bigger and to dream. And um, so it is in the sign of Cancer. And it has been for a while. And cancer is our sign of home and security. And so we're having this broader view of what it means to be home in the cosmos. What it means for the earth to take her rightful place back into her divine destiny and become the Eden star that she is meant to become. And so there's a lot of support even though we're having a lot of intense shifting going on there's the support for seeing a wider perspective and seeing a bigger world the information from the messenger going from pisces to aquarius and back and then communicating with this direct energy of jupiter the dreamer part of us the expansive so again with this um sun in pisces time here until the 20th of march time to dream time to go into the cave time to open up to guidance time to set that meditation practice that's going to support you through the shifts and changes and when we really get in to the action the second part of 2014 is when we're going to really the gates are going to be open for that horse to run and so now you've got to do this inner work if you can pay attention to what's going on in these retrogrades in this these spring months until the middle of may and saturn's retrograde until the middle of july actually um you can set up a whole new life for yourself in just a few months. And so it's just kind of honoring your process. The first step to these changes on the planet is learning to forgive and love ourselves and be right where we're at. Now, this is really cool because 
we're getting some support here by Venus moving into Aquarius and Venus of course is our planet of love and so as that moves into Aquarius and the messengers that have come from the Mercury retrograde it's saying to us that uh, our new world the Aquarian age is one based on love and it's uh, based on um, love of the self actually first we need to love and forgive ourselves release that shame release that worthlessness um, understand that yes as humans we all feel that way but it's no longer really serving us to hold on to that inner pain and so Venus is a very nice support here as we move into that expansive Jupiter energy and into um, in this meditation time in this time of the Sun in Pisces so we're preparing for this meditation time is really important because we're preparing for the changes that are the intense shifting of energy that's coming in April. Now April has in store for us this grand cross, a grand cardinal cross, which has happened before, but this one is very exact and it's coming right at the same time of the fifth exact. We talked about the Pluto Uranus square and that there's seven of these throughout a three year period. And in April is the fifth one. So I associate these with the major chakras. And so we're talking about the throat chakra, the fifth chakra. This is where we come to express our truth. So these inner changes we've going, been going through, this delving to the inner shadow, what does it mean for us in the new world? What does it mean for, um, f how do we express the new world in our life personally? And so we're really coming to a place to um, do this. And this is, so this is a big shift to come out with the truth of who we really are and there's just tons of astrological support for this but there's also two eclipses in April that the fifth exact as well as this grand cardinal square and so just tons of activation energy for April and so we need to take March to cement these meditation practices to open up to this cosmic oneness that's available to us in this Piscean energy to open up our guidance um, and be able to um, be holders of peace uh, for this time that's coming uh, in April. The Grand Cardinal Cross is, it's interesting because a cross it has all these squares, but when they all come together, there's also those oppositions which can bring a lot of awareness towards how to move forward. And so to me, I'm seeing this Cardinal Cross as a, actually a very beneficial thing of the four, the energy of four, um, for a stability of building a foundation so we can move forward and so we're anchoring these new energies to the earth so April is going to be about receiving these activations and letting them work into our life letting our life shift and change to come into harmony with our new world and so the taking this month of March to prepare for that process is going to be really powerful and um, so this energy of moving into what we're really here for a lot of us are feeling these like i'm i'm here for something it's a very important time on the planet but i don't have the road map i don't know what it is i'm supposed to be doing and so the month of march is about just being where you're at invoking that self-love and recognizing that um right now you might be just here your grand purpose might be here just to hold peace on the planet and we talk about this revolution energy that is here in this Pluto Uranus square. And I'd like to bring forward how radical, the most radical and revolutionary action you can take right now is to be at peace in your life, to disconnect from those shadow matrices that uh, create these parasitic energies that um, create more and more fear and um, drag pull on our energy the negativity and so when you can rise above those energies you can be the peace you can be uh, in this place of harmony that using that Jupiter energy of broader perspective um, that is a radical notion and so your work for March is to just kind of recognize that as we go through these shifts and changes you being the peace being the pillar of light and example for the people around you, staying out of fear, that is the big work on the planet right now. And then through this meditative time, through this kind of rehash of those shadow energies and clearing the slate of whatever else, then we're going to be ready to leap off in a new way. Let that horse run, land on our feet, and let that horse 
uh, run into our, our brand new world. And so just knowing that this commitment to your meditation practice is going to be uh, what brings you to the place you want to for in the future months. So there's something we talked about how this Pluto Uranus square really is similar to the configuration that happened in the 60s. And there were some really important energies that started to come through there but weren't able to complete. And there was a real kind of desire for social change and social justice. And there's this willing to st willingness to stand up and protest. And um, that's, there's this, there was like a conviction, a shift of energy in the psyche of, of uh, our time, as particularly in the United States, and uh, towards these changes. But now we have, you know, with this Pluto, with Uranus in Aries, um, the revolution, Uranus being the awakener, the planet of revolutionary change in the sign of the self. This inner, con this conviction of for change, for social justice is in the realm of ourself and our identity. And, and so this, this protest that needs to happen is in the platform of who we are. And so March is also a month about coming into a true inner conviction about, about what's true for us. When we can love ourselves, when we can have self-acceptance for where we're at, we can bring through this divine spark of our own individual identity um, to come forward with the expression of that as we move into this fifth chakra activation, feeling safe in the world to let our freak flag fly. So the age of Pisces was a lot about giving up our individuality to the collective. And when we did that, we came under authoritarian influences. And the way that we survived through those was conformity. And that's what kept us from being able to move forward in our collective. And now the age of Aquarius, very different. So if we can use that collective oneness, this unified field of what the age of Pisces, Pisces taught us and brought us to, and then awaken, use this awakening energy of the self, of the, the divine, the, you are the only way, you are the only one to, that can express the divine in your way. So you are very important here on the planet right now. And you cannot do it anybody else's way. You've got to come forward with your own truth. And so this fifth chakra activation is bringing, bringing this to the foreground for us and um, bringing forward this inner conviction, the protesting of, that goes on within ourselves. So the, the idea of integrity, the definition of integrity is changing where it used to be a social, described by the social norm, that integrity was, was what was socially uh, acceptable. And integrity is now coming into a new definition as we make these changes into being, having that integrity for the truth of you, your unique way of expressing the divine and being able to really stand, stand behind that. And so bringing that energy of protest, of standing up for what's right, for social justice to the self. First, that means forgiving ourselves, letting go of all of that Piscean model of the martyr and the shame and the, and the deeper inner worthlessness and come into the truth of our divine nature, loving ourselves for where we're at, accepting ourselves for the truth of who we are, learning about who we are in our divine um, expression and then being able to bring that forward. This is the revolution of our time. The change happens within each human heart first. That is how we make the changes on the planet. And so to be brave enough to have this inner conviction, to have this, this protest of so, social justice within our own hearts, this is what we're being called to do. So what does this mean in our daily life? This means to no longer let them treat you this way. This means to stop accommodating the truth of who you are so that there's peace around you. And this is kind of interesting because Mars, our fighter planet, in the sign of Libra, and Libra can be a little bit complacent. Libra wants to see the both sides of the situation and it wants to create harmony above all and avoid conflict. And so our fighter planet is in that place. But this going tandem with this, this Saturn retrograde in Scorpio, going to the inner depths of ourselves, Saturn is not going to let that complacency happen. 
So we are being forced to release those shadow parts of ourselves, which have a lot to do with the shadow matrix and that whole paradigm of, of um, the martyr and the um, victim and all that stuff. So this is our opportunity to just completely shed the inner victim and, um, and love ourselves and bring in that divine nature, honor the truth of who we are. And we do that by standing up for ourselves coming forward in our light in each situation every day and and not apologizing for who we really are so this is the massive shift that's happening and we're seeing of course a lot of outer changes in our world as far as in the in the bigger things that you know the financial systems and the the the, the falling away of the old paradigm but the revolution of our time is an inner personal revolution that then we bring forward that we are no longer going to compromise what's true and what's right in our heart that we're not going to accept violence in our daily life that we are going to hold ourselves and the people around us to the standards of the truth of what's true for us and the power in that is what's going to bring around about these changes in in our world now um near the end of the month uh, Mercury, as it comes out of its retrograde, comes into conjunction with uh, Neptune, which is at home in Pisces. So it's really bringing those messages and crossing over Neptune and bringing the messages of this new world into the energy of the Pisces, joining together the beautiful part of the Pisces energy, of this unified field of this collective unconsciousness, this, the power of knowing that we're all one but bringing that information about the strong individual self that the revolution happens within. And um, so it's anchoring this, the loss of identity we had in the Pisces, Piscean age to authority, it's, it's bringing home this energy of our own individual authority. And this is our inner conviction to be true to ourselves, no matter what is the reaction of the people around us. And this is really interesting because the year of the horse, they say politically over time, it's it's a year where there can be a lot of political kind of gridlock where things don't move forward because p people are unwilling to no negotiate and um, they want to stick very closely to their principles. And um, yeah, that could be uh, hard for um, political things moving forward, but isn't it time for us to stop negotiating the truth of who we are, to stop compromising the truth of what's right for us in this world? What, that we want to live in peace and harmony and come from a place of love and to stop uh, compromising that on any level and saying to ourselves, saying to our world, to our leaders, no more, no more compromise. We are all one here and we need to find a new way to do it and that Venus in Aquarius is showing us that this new world is based on love. First our self-love, then we can learn to love each other in the unified field as we accept that divine nature within ourselves. And so that place of, of, of the horse <laughs> using that energy of the non-negotiation, there's no negotiation here. And so, so with Mercury in Libra, the, the platform for our forward, I mean, Mars in Libra, the platform for our forward motion is in relationships. And of course it's going, it's in, it's appearing to move backwards as retrograde and so we're kind of going back through Libra and reevaluating relationships and so it's interesting because first of all the energy of our moving forward comes in relationships this could be if stuff is unresolved from relationships like say you've been appeasing and making the peace for far too long and it's time for you to stand up for yourself or something like that that sh that's going to come forward in your relationships and these things are going to come up to the surface to be resolved on the other hand it's relationships that are going to be our support in moving forward so it's really important in this time when you go through these places that you get the squeeze of life when you're dealing with that shadow stuff and those deep inner feelings of unworthiness that you come forward and ask for help and support and when you come forward in that vulnerability and you're willing to share that place of those feelings the amazing help you could have on another person oh my gosh I've been feeling that same way I, I feel so much better knowing oh wait this I did feel that way and then I started to feel better and this is what I learned from it so don't be afraid your support system is through relationships right now the forward motion is through reaching out and being support when you're feeling good and 
you know, you can help the people that are in those places of darkness. And we're kind of going back and forth between these paradigms. And when you're in the lower paradigm, in the shadow, you get sucked back into that heavy energy. It feels really impossible. It feels like it hurts to live sometimes. And then to have someone there that says, oh my gosh, I felt this way and I moved through it. Or to say, gosh, I feel this way too. What what should we do about it? Can we talk over how we feel? This is our support system to move us through. And then we have these times of expansiveness. Jupiter's going to help with this, moving into these broader perspectives, pulling us out of the narrow-minded minded everyday reality and showing us this wider view of what's possible. And so we'll have these expanded times where we can feel when we move when we move those lower energies, we move into greater joy. And it's joy that's based on not on outside occurrences, but coming from the spring of our own heart. And I love how Cartron uh, through who comes through Patrick McCormick and uh, a, um, a presentation brought through this concept. He talks about harp and chemtrails and all of the things that are working to keep these activations, these energies of, of light um, uh, from us. And it's he said, good luck. He's basically saying, good luck with that one when this energy of light starts to come through our own hearts. And so coming back to that place of knowing that you're here to be a peace holder, a light holder, and not worrying too much about exactly what you're here to do as far as changing the world and your big dream and vision, that will come. Right now, love yourself, accept yourself, be a holder of peace, be supportive for the people around you that are going through these shifts and energies because they're really, really important and the revolution is in our own heart. And so being that peace, loving yourself, Finding that inner conviction to be able to move into this fifth chakra activation of expressing the new us, our new world, what this, the trauma of 2013 and 2012, what that was all about to be able to move ourselves into our truth. And so with that, I wish you the best of luck on your journey and find that quiet place of peace so that you can radiate that out to the world. Be the light in your heart. Take that radical step of moving out of fear. And I wish the best to you. And until next month, namaste.